So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. Congratulations to the following brokers. Ameritime Realty, Dunes Properties, Impact Real Estate, Long and Foster. Yeah, that's a big one. 11,000 agents. Plum Tree Realty, Real Estate Professionals, Realty Ohio, Remax Advantage, Remax Essential, and Agent Strong all have taken action and negotiated steep discounts on Rebus University's award-winning courses for all of their agents. And if you're an agent at one of those companies and you haven't been to Rebus University yet, go to rebusuniversity.com and click on the link that says a Rebus Preferred and see what your company has done for you. Man, you're going to be impressed. If you want unpublished pricing for all of your agents like these brokers have done, go to hybendigital.com backslash teams or simply pick up the phone and text or call Catherine Brower at 843-749-9900. And now for the review of the day, the real deal, five stars by Hal Benz. I've been in the real estate space for over 15 years. And during that time, I've been lucky enough to become a top producing agent. And more recently, a highly sought after trainer and real estate coach. And Pat, I have to tell you, what you're doing here inspires me. What you're delivering here every day, the meat and potatoes that you elicit from your guests is among the best training available in our industry. And the fact that you make this available to everyone for free is a testament to your generosity and caring that I believe really does exist in our industry. A lot of people think that the real estate space is doggy dog. What I know as an absolute truth is that it is full of smart, generous, and caring people who are always willing to share what they know to help someone else succeed. Helping someone else become better doesn't make them a threat to our own business. A rising tide lifts all boats. This is the real deal, my friend. Keep up the good work. Five stars, Hal Benz. Thank you, Mr. Hal Benz. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. All right, Rockstar Nation, we have a great guest. I'm excited to get Kevin Kaufman online from Tempe, Arizona, part of the 4610 group who is turning heads, turning heads. Uh, he runs it with his partner, Fred Weaver, and he, uh, you know, they're doing some incredible stuff. And anyways, we're going to dig deep down first time guest here, and we're going to talk about all things of real estate sales, real estate commissions, real estate listings, uh, and in addition to all kinds of neat stuff that's happening now in Kevin's life. So, Hey, without further ado, Kevin, welcome to real estate rock stars. Hey, Pat. Thanks a lot for having me, man. I'm excited, excited to join you. As you mentioned, first time caller, but long time listener. <laughs> hey, what, what, uh, you know, that sounds like what people say when they call in, right? You know, to, to like Rush Limbaugh or whatever. Hey, yeah. you know, first time caller, long time listener. Hey, so thank you very much, by the way, for being a lifetime listener. What, um, why don't you give everybody a little rundown on yourself so they get to know you better? Yeah. So as you mentioned, I've got a business partner by the name of Fred. So we run a company, uh, a team called Group 4610 Real Estate Network here. We're based in Tempe. Uh, we operate in a few different states and cities, but Tempe is home base. We started working together 2008. So, um, you know, in, in my world, that was like in my first six months in the business and, and our world in Phoenix was falling apart. My first my first, uh, let me see, my third deal ever was a short sale, and then probably my next thousand or so were short sales. And so that's kind of where I cut my teeth in the industry. And, 
we ran a business. Uh, the, the listing side just happened to be short sales. The rest of it, I mean, it looked like an MREA model business if you looked at it um, up until 2014. And uh, just that on the listing side, it was all short sales, not all, but you know, like literally 95% short sales, if not a little bit higher some years. And so, you know, we transitioned a few years ago in 2014 and we now run uh, that fancy buzzword called expansion where we've got agents in multiple cities and states around the country. And uh, we're just trying our hardest to figure this out and, and reinvest in our systems and make them better and help some people make some more money and, and build some real estate careers. Wow. I love it. I love it. Okay. So let's, we're going to get down to nitty gritty too, because I want to know where you're at now. Because I, I know Phoenix in, in that area there, it, it, it has seen some swings and it sees all kinds of weird stuff in my mind that a lot of other markets don't see. Um, like the, the brokerages that are popping up and the different uh, people out there, they're starting to try to disrupt things. They go there, it seems. Um, so I'm going to get into all that stuff with you. So, But first of all, let's get to some uh, nitty gritty meat and potatoes here. So like how many houses did you sell in the last 12 months? Yeah, so just over 550 in the last 12 months, about 150 million in volume, maybe, maybe a little bit. Last year was exactly 150 million. In the last 12 months, probably a little bit higher our, our average prices have been going up a little bit so in all of our markets. And so volume is a little bit higher, but about $150 million. That's brilliant. Okay, so, so what was your ego commission income there, Kev? What was, your, what was the total there? Love that. Ego commission was just a, just a hair under $4.5 million last year. Damn. And, uh, so not, not bad. Not where we want it to be by any means. <laughs> so $4.5 million, what would you keep? What was your net profit? Uh, wait, what's profit? What's that? Just kidding. <laughs> we were fortunate enough last year, we ended up a hair over 16%. Uh, goal is 15. Uh, you know, 20 is the stretch goal, but with our, with our model goal, goal was 15 and we ended up just over 16. So that was nice. Yeah. So 10% is 450, 20% is 900. So you're like 700 grand. Yeah. So 350, not enough. 350 each. Yeah. So not enough, but it's a good start. Did you, do you, do you take any salaries or is that, is that how you get paid? No, that's, that's how we get paid strictly, okay. strictly up the profit. That's why we've got it currently set up, I would say. All right. And then, and so what's your team look like? Like, like map it out for me, man. So let, I'll start on the sales side of the business uh, because I think that's a little easier to understand. And that's sim quite simply, we've got agents who work with buyers and sellers, right? And so, I mean, it's a sales agent. They do that. They work with buyers and sellers every day. And uh, we allow our agents, we train our agents to, to work with both. Um, and then we've got also on the sales side of the business, uh, what I'll call a leader. I don't want to put a title on it, but we'll call them a leader because they've got some production requirements, but they've also got uh, growth and recruiting requirements as well. Wait we a minute, wait a minute. Let me... You call them a leader, like a leader, like the lead. Okay, they're like a, let's call it like, you call a leader. I guess most companies call it vice president of X or whatever. They call them vice yeah. presidents or partners, right? Um, because they sell and recruit. Yeah. Yep. So All right. We, tell, tell, tell me about this because I haven't heard much people doing this. So the, here's, the, here's the reality. If you took the lid off the top of my business and you look down, um, the truth is we look very much like a brokerage. We just happen to be operating inside of other brokerages. The way we operate, the way we look, it's very much like a brokerage. And, and if there's one thing that the entire industry can agree on when it comes to the brokerage world, it's that the number of agents you have matters, right? And so there's the production of them, but there's also the number of them. And the one thing that most people will agree on, if not everybody, is the number you have matters. And so that's why there's a, I'm going to call it a recruiting element to, to our business. Uh, we very much look like a brokerage from that standpoint. Um, that doesn't mean to say we want anybody and everybody because we certainly have a process for hiring and the number of agents we have matters and that number needs to go up. Okay. And, and how do these people... How are they compensated? How are they? What do you expect out of them? How many do you have? Well, give, give me an idea of what this looks like. Someone driving down a road right now in Tupelo, Mississippi is pulling a car over 
And they're like, I got to write this down, right? Yeah. So, so explain it like a third grader can understand what, uh, how, to, how to build this. If they're in Tupelo, number one, they're probably listening to Paul Thorne. And <laughs> second of all, he, um, you know, if they wanted to write this down, I mean, the reality, so in our, in our world, it looks like this. There's, uh, there's production, and that's, you know, paid on a split of the commission. And then there is, from a leadership standpoint, for those who are in a position to recruit and to lead other agents, they are basically paid an override on all of their agents' commission. So, in so give me some exact. So let's say I'm an agent there. I'm a quote unquote leader, right? I'm designated leader. My job is to recruit and to sell as half of my day. I'm selling the other half of day. I'm recruiting. Um, you know, I recruit three agents in a month. How, how, what can I expect? Yeah. So obviously it's going to, it's going to be a hundred percent dependent upon how, how those agents that they've recruited produce. And now we've got a system for training and coaching, which is completely separate, which I'll go into when we talk about our hub or our back end of our, of our real estate operation. But at the end of the day, they're going to just be paid on the overall production of the agents on their team. Like 10% off the top, like an exit? Yeah, it's or, or typically, ten, it's or, typically a 10% override. Yep. Okay. That's exactly so it's like the exit model. Kind of, or EXP with the just 10% flat. Actually, no, not EXP, but exit, right? Where yeah, no, I think you're pretty prob probably pretty close with the exit uh, yeah. reference. Okay, so so, um, so 10%, and hey, that's a pretty good deal too, right? You know what I mean? A good deal for you and a good deal for them. Yep. I think a lot of people think that. They think that that's their job, you know, as the rainmaker, as the, the main person, but you can make a lot of money. You could probably make more money and not work um, <laughs> the hours of a real estate agent by just being a recruiter with that type of incentive. Now, do they have to meet with the people and close them or do you do that? No, no, they do that. They, they do that. So anybody who's in a position of recruiting, like they're, they handle all of that recruiting process. So, I mean, you mentioned that we've, we've got a gentleman, he probably made close to $300,000 last year without sitting in anybody's living room uh, who in, at that point, he, I mean, no production at all. For him last year he's he's doing a little bit of production this year in addition to his recruiting but yeah at the end of the day this model can build because we've got the back end there for them so it's their job to kind of bring in the front end and when i say leader the reason i use that word i, I don't love that word so i think it's for a lot of reasons which we can't shouldn't go into today um they're like they're there because like they're the they're the they're leading the way they're demonstrating the activities of what the other agents hopefully are learning to do themselves so they can become a top performer. So it's almost like a mini rainmaker within, within our organization, right? And instead of having to deal with the admin and the operations and all the stuff that goes with owning a real estate team, they're just, they're plugged into our system that happens to run out of the office in Tempe, Arizona. I love that. I love that. Okay. So keep going. You were, you were basically breaking down the team till I interrupted you. So yeah. So, so there's so there's the that's the sales side of the business. Now on the other side of the business is our it's our operations, right? So I look at it as I've started looking at Group Forty Six Ten as a platform and not so much a real estate team. And the reason I use the word platform is number one, it's buzzword. Who doesn't like that word? I love number, that word. Yeah. But number two is I, I genuinely view it that way. So our platform for our team includes awesome administrative support. So one of the things that we do that's been a little bit different than most in the industry, especially for those who have expanded outside of their home city, is our uh, administrative staff who handle transaction and transactions and listings, they're all licensed. They do license activity every single day. And our salespeople do not do anything once something's under contract. There is another licensed person who is, sits in our office in Tempe and they are licensed in, in the different states that we operate in. Um, who will schedule inspections, they'll negotiate repairs, et cetera. So it's a high level of service on the administrative side. So that's kind of the admin side of the platform. The next side is um, the training. So we use a learning automation system to train our agents. And it doesn't matter if someone's experienced and they've been in the business for 10 years or 10 minutes, they're going to go through the same process to begin with and use our learning automation system because this is about it's half onboarding at the beginning half half training and then it gets into more nitty-gritty training about 
basically how to work in our ecosystem. So we happen to use our, you know, the CRM and the different leads and uh, the different scripts we have for working with buyers. It's very detailed and it's phased out over eight different phases and self-paced. And so they'll go through that self-paced training and they'll have to test out of a few different categories. And that leader, the local leader most likely will be the one who, uh, you know, gives them the okay to pass out on the kind of the big, the big test, if you will. And then after that training aspect, we've got the thing that we're missing, I believe, until very recently uh, was a coaching aspect and accountability aspect to it because um, we just grew to the size where our leaders couldn't hold their people accountable as well as do their job. And um, that's interesting. Yeah. So we brought in a, someone who full time, he's, he's running three different coaching programs for our agents. And so, so he's like a full time trainer accountability person. Yep. Okay. So this, this is good stuff too, man. I, I mean, I don't mean to keep stopping you, but yeah, value bombs here. So it was when it comes to team building, so we're even office building, you know, which you're kind of a team ridge at this point, a team and you know, a team yeah. office. What, what, you know, how does this person work? How do they, what do they do to keep everybody accountable? And, and is it everybody or just the agents that raise their hand or just the agents that fall below a certain quota? Tell me everything. Yeah. So, you know, the, the thing is, you, I don't believe you can keep, keep people accountable. And so that's a challenge, right? Some people want accountability. Some people are accountable and, and, and others aren't. And so we are a very much kind of earn your right type of, type of company. And so what he does is we've got a couple different tracks set up that he's designed and his name is Eric. He's amazing. He's been in the business 15 years himself. Um, guy's awesome. But we've got a, like what we call a launch pad program uh, or lift off and they'll come into the company and they'll go through a little four week series. That's kind of the basics. Like if you're a, if you're a sports fan at all, you know who John Wooden is and John Wooden was like famous for, Hey, like this is how we tie our shoes at UCLA, like the basics, the fundamentals. So there's a little four week training course that all new agents go through in addition to their, I'll call it their skill specific training. They'll go through that on the coaching side and then they go into either launch labs or they go into peak performers, or they'll do both. And those are just a couple different groups that we have based on performance and where they, if they're experienced based on their recent performance, if they're new, they're all going to go into launch lab until they reach a certain performance point. And that looks like small group coaching. I want you to think about the word toolbox. What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox. And it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient. And the thing is, it's absolutely free. All you gotta do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox 444-999. Do it now. Uh, so in Launch Lab, it looks like a group call on, on a Zoom system. And then there's a smaller group aspect to it on Thursday, actually, where they're calling in to report their numbers. Uh, in so, wait a minute, so, this, so they do a Zoom call every day? On, no, just on Monday. It's like a 45-minute to an hour okay. uh, account of, or coaching session. And then that's everybody who's, who happens to be in that track. So that could be 15, 25 people. Uh, and then on Thursdays, those same people are divided into small groups of two and three. And they're, then they log in for a, an accountability phone call with the coach where they're just, for the most part, reporting their numbers and talking about any wins or losses they have with their small group and the coach. And the small group, what's that about? It's just accountability buddies. 
type of deal. Like your partners, right? To keep yes. them, keep them, keep them, keep them honest. Yeah. You know, with, with each other so they can all, you know, it's, it's just nice to relate to someone else who's doing the same thing that you are. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're relate. They're bringing in their, 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 uh, their numbers for the week. You put uh, three newbies together and uh, one gets a listing and it's like, Bing, yeah. right the other. Oh, watch day. out. Oh, my goodness. Time to set the alarm clock earlier. Absolutely. And then we've got our peak performers, which is what it sounds like. I mean, these are the guys and gals who are selling, you know, two, three, four, five houses a month in some cases. And they're in very small groups uh, of either two or three with other performers at the same level or very similar level. And they are getting on weekly phone calls for about an hour with the coach. And, uh, and they do that also as a group and they've got different things that they do online as well to help keep each other accountable and responsible to each other. And then there is a sort of all company, uh, what we call uh, growth lab on Wednesdays, which is a zoom call for the entire company. And it's very topical. So, um, could be on calendars. It could be on open houses. It could be on listings. It could, you could name, it could be on a hundred different things, but it's the coach and or a guest. And it's the entire company can log in at the same time and watch it. And of course we catalog it all and put that in, you know, into our training system for, yeah. for the future. But that's uh, those are kind of our three different tracks, if you will, for, for coaching within our company. That's part of our, what I would call our value proposition to an agent who is looking at our team or, or our, or our team ridge, as you called it. Yeah. I love that dude. That's, that's serious. Okay. And so what's the rest of the team look like? All right. So then after that, so then you start to look at our operations team and our operations team uh, is very different than our administrative team, even though those words are kind of jointly used a lot in this industry. Our operations team is broken into kind of two different departments, if you will. Part of it is what I would call sales support. So we've basically got what we call an agent services coordinator. It's exactly what it sounds like. She's there to help people on board, answer questions, kind of be the point guard for all of the I'll call it help desk type items like, hey, I need my Boomtown login or my Mojo login or my email password, stuff like that. So she can run point on either handle it herself or make sure it gets to the right person. Then there's an operations manager who I would look at her as almost more of like a project manager, anything that's going to touch the agents. So it goes to everything from the internal communications within our Slack team, within our Slack groups to making sure people are getting the text message reminders for their coaching calls, to making sure we're rolling out the marketing graphics, which I'll talk about in a second, things like that. So anything that touches the salesperson, that's that side of the operations. The other side of the operations, I'd call it business support. And that's, that's everything from the money side of things and the HR type side of things to um, the, he also oversees our technology side. And so we've got a couple software developers on staff who have built out our, um, our own internal technology that we use, which at the, for the most part, it's a database. Like it is, it houses all of our appointment data and all of our transaction data first and foremost. And I mean, we've spent, you know, a good year or so getting that up, getting that up to speed to where we, where we feel really good about it. And then the other piece of it is what I'd call bells and whistles for our agents to make their lives easier. So as they input things into the system, it makes, the, you know, it makes their lives easier because it drops onto their calendar right away when they in, insert their appointment into the system. Or uh, when they go to get their, they're going to do an open house and they've got to submit an open house request form on our app. They um, now, they, before they can even check their email, they've got their, they've got their flyers in their email. They've got their social media graphics in their email already things like that. So just different little tools and bells and whistles to hopefully make the sales agent's job a little bit easier to do every single day. Um, so that's sort of the operations side of our company. And then we've got, um, we've got marketing, which is new for us. We've always been really, I guess I've always viewed marketing Pat as um, getting my listing sold and doing that in a good way. And then we've, we realized like, that's just not good enough. Yeah. And so because we really do operate like a brokerage, we realize like one of the things that we can do is to help our agents brand themselves. And we really focus a lot of our efforts on them working their sphere of influence and not just all the, the abundance of internet leads and referrals that we bring in as a company, yeah. but also helping them to build that up. And so we do what I would call some done for you marketing and then some done with you type of marketing 
from our marketing side of the platform. And then the last thing is, you know, CRM and leads. I mean, an abundant amount of leads. Um, we have, you know, we had to come to a place where we actually had to pull back the number of leads and sort of limit everybody's, we use Boomtown, uh, limit how many leads everybody had in an account so they could actually get further and into deeper dialogue with the, with those leads. Yeah. A lot of people are doing that. I'm, I'm finding, you know what I mean? Like people I'm talking to, they're, they're, they're pulling out of, of, you know, SEO leads and, and truly and Zillow and realtor.com. They're, they're plowing into Facebook. They're getting a much better quality uh, leads and, and, you know, bang for the buck. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in the shifting of, of real estate agent leads, which is fascinating to watch just one interview at a time. Let's talk about that a little bit. So with the systems that you have, um, what percentage buyers versus listings do you have? So too much. We are, we were at 64% buyers last year, really like to be at 60 at the max. Uh, and that's just the reality of where we're at today. And yeah, so a lot of agents are, a lot of teams, you know, have the same struggle. Once you get above that 50 market, it like starts sucking you in so bad that it's, it's like a vacuum and it's hard to get back below 50% listing. So the listings that you do get the 35% or so listings that you get, where are they coming from? Are those all SOIs or are you using any sort of, I mean, if you, you have all these systems to get buyer leads. Do you have any systems besides SOI that you use to get listings? Well, I mean, obviously SOI is the number one, but the, the, the top three, the other top sources of our listings for really the last probably three years in a row would actually be the buyer leads that turn into listings that are, there's also a listing attached to it and, and slightly higher than that or not slightly, but higher than that would be um, a company called Z buyer. We buy their leads. Most people call them junk leads because they're those junky internet. Tell me leads. about this. What is it? Z, Z buyer. Is it Z buyer.com? Yep. Z buyer.com. How's, it, how's it work? What do you pay them? What do they do? You pay per County and it's a different cost per County and you literally, it's pretty antiquated. Uh, you actually have to log in and you have to copy and paste the contact information and then put it into your CRM. It's a pain. And most people will tell us, you know, those leads are junk and I don't want anything to do with them, but it's a follow-up game. And the How reality, do they get them? That's a great question. I don't know. So mystery. Heard, mystery. And you pay, you pay per lead or do you just pay them a referral fee? Nope. You just pay per month per county. So you might pay like in so Maricopa County where I live, you might pay say 200 bucks a month for, and it's all of the leads. And that could be 10 leads. It could, it's probably not 10. You almost, it's probably more like 10 a day. Um, and so it's an abundance it's of leads. a month. That's a deal. Yeah. It, oh, it is absolutely a deal. And it, but it's also, there's a lot of competition because they'll sell the same lead oh, to really? three agents and two investors. So it's kind of like an expired list. Basically. Uh, I mean, all these agents call at the same time. Yeah. So you just got to beat them. And that's why most agents don't like them. But, you know, truthfully, we've listed a handful of leads a handful of listings from them every month for years. I mean, it's like clockwork. That's awesome. Well, you know, because if a lot of investors are buying it, then, you know, they're all going to give them 60% of, of uh, you know, 60% of what it's worth, you know, because they want to flip the thing. And not everybody is a fire sale at the end of the day, you know, and you can exactly. use that as your script. Say, I know you've been called by a lot of investors, but I'm not an investor. I'm a real estate agent. Um, I work for you. Right. I'm not going to, yeah. even if you want to call me and give, I'll give you a free on the phone market analysis to tell you whether there's some investors that are calling you now or ripping you off or not. Yeah, completely. So that, it, that creates a great listing opportunity. And you actually just mentioned one of the other sources. Uh, we've done a really good job at building relationships with uh, different investors and wholesalers in our market. And so when there's a deal that's not right for them, we get, we get a handful of, uh, of referrals that, that turn out to be listings. So, so you just made friends with the, the wholesalers. Yep. How, okay. So let's talk about mean potatoes. How did you make friends with the flippers and wholesalers? I'll tell you what, probably the way I made all the friends I have in this industry, started teaching for free. And um, so we go backwards about 10 and 11 years. Uh, Fred and I started teaching short sales and we were closing them at a 90 plus percent success rate. And we started teaching for free every 
every other week and we'd go to a different market center or brokerage basically every two weeks and teach a two to three hour class for free um, around town. And that just led to so many introductions and just built so many relationships and it gave us such a platform that it still to this day pays off. Um, literally here we are in 2018, the classes we were teaching 2008, 2009, 2010, still paying off. We, you know, we did a, we did a video blog back in 2009 and, uh, ran that for a couple of years, got us in trouble a little bit, but for the most part created a lot of like, um, great relationships with other agents, which just lead to more relationships with other people. And, you know, next thing you know, you've got a lot of friends, you take care of your relationships in the industry, just like you would with your sphere of influence. And you'd be surprised what can happen over a long period of time. Yeah. Well, and, and so you got this huge team and of course everyone listening or, or curious about, you know, what systems uh, are, do you use that are available to other people um, that they could get, whether it be apps on their phone or whether it be, you know, just simply Slack or, or what have you, what they just name off, you know, your top five or so. Yeah, so Boomtown for sure. Uh, we've been a Boomtown customer for years. Slack, as you mentioned, we, love, we just moved to Slack in the last three months and absolutely love it um, for team communication. Uh, we use Zoom as well for all of our conferences and all of our, our, our team webinars and coaching. We use Zoom. Um, I think I'm, I'm looking at my phone here. I'm looking at my apps to see if there's anything else that would be external that we use. I personally like the slide dial app, you know, so you can yeah, call yeah. somebody, go straight to voicemail. I love that. Um, what else is in my, you know, we started using uh, for a team uh, like slide dial. Um, and that's a uh, 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 Voxer. Yes. You know, um, yeah. I'm, I'm using Voxer back and forth with the team and it's just, uh, I like it a lot cause you know, I don't have to stop and type and, you know, <laughs> misspell and you know all that but okay so i want to talk to you about slack because okay, a lot more people are using it um i've been using it for about a year now um and if you guys aren't using slack with if you have a team you really need to look at it um and basically as a communication it's kind of like you take your team and you put it into this box like a chat room and then all your messages are are just there. It's just organized, so your e emails don't get mixed with spam. You don't have to go um, like type a guy's name in uh, to look at the last twelve texts you've had with them. It's all there. You can upload things. But my question to you, Kevin, about Slack is this: like, can you list off the names of the different groups? And by the way, guys, these are groups. Like in Slack, you could put a group. Like, like, like I could have a group and I'm assuming it would be like listing agents, buyer agents, or, or mini pod number seven, which would be like the three brand new agents that he hired last month that only need to talk to, to the three of them. What, like, what, what sort of groups, how many of these groups and, and how does somebody organize it who's listening to this in Tupelo and they're saying, man, I got the big team like Kevin's. I want to implement Slack where do I start by besides just having everybody go into the general room and, and throw stuff up against the wall? Yeah. So I'll, I'll just, I'm like, I got my phone right here in front of me with my Slack app. Yeah, list them off, man. Give you a, I'll give you a real live one. So the different channels we have is all agents, which is exactly what it sounds like. All leaders, exactly what it sounds like. So anybody in a, in a call, call it a department head or leadership role, peak performers, which is one of our uh, coaching groups. Uh, we've got a one for each one of our locations. So Yuma, Tucson, Tempe, Glendale. Um, then we've got one for the hub. So that's all of our kind of our back end operations. And there's other a few, there's quite a few others as well that I'm not subscribed to because quite honestly, I don't, I don't need to be a part of those groups. So like as an example, there'd be one, if I was an agent in San Luis Obispo, I'd be on the San Luis Obispo channel as well. So we break, break them out into those different pods and then the other thing I love about Slack is you can have the direct messages as well. So if you, know, if you and I are on the same team, Pat, and you're, you're in Maryland, I'm in Arizona, and we need to talk to somebody else on the team who's in Tempe, and create a private channel just for the three of us, send a quick message, and now all three of us are in the loop. And uh, so it's really great. So we create those on the fly as well. I've got one with my 
executive assistant that I talk to daily through the Slack app. Um, our operations team, like I said, you know, and the hub team as well, use those, use those channels quite a bit. I love that. I love that. And then you can link other things. You can Google Sheets, Dropbox, all that stuff links right to it. Um, so you can share stuff like that. And I appreciate you sharing those rooms because I think that's the big question is what, if, you know, what do I do? You know, how do I set it up? So that, that, that's awesome, dude. So, all right. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on in Arizona. Like I said before, it's kind of like a Petri dish out there. You know, um, Nate Martinez has been on a couple of times, you know, in six Remax offices there in Phoenix. And, and um, you know, the last time I spoke with him, he was telling me about all these companies. Tell me about these companies that are trying to disrupt the Phoenix area. And by the way, you know, we're not seeing this. I'm not seeing this in a lot of other places, right? I'm not, I talk to agents, you know, we have three episodes a week. I mean, I've talked to, I'm going on 700 agents. I don't hear a lot about this in other cities. Um, And I'm, I don't know why, maybe Phoenix is close to California. So a lot of stuff starts there, but like, tell me about some of these other brokerages and uh, how you're uh, dealing with the challenge. Yeah. So, I mean, the reality is, is it's just the times are changing, right? And so you either adapt or, or you die is kind of the way I look at it. So um, it's just, it's the reality of our market today. And like, I, you know, what I really think the biggest disruptors we've always had in Phoenix, we've always had more of the hundred percent companies here and more of the brokerages that are willing to be a brokerage for less. That's always been here. And that's always been a big part of Phoenix. But I think the big disruptor in our marketplace is the tech companies. So the open doors and offer pads of the world. And, tell, uh, tell me how they work. Yeah, so it, someone listening to me like, I don't know what open door is. I don't know what offer pad is. What is it and how does it work? It's imagine, if you will, a tech company and a wholesaler if a wholesaler actually didn't see the house. And they only use tech and data and analytics. And so literally billion dollar valuation type of company and they start here because the houses are, for the most part, cookie cutter houses. It's easy to comp a house without seeing it, for the most part, and not be too wrong. And um, so they all start here because close to California, there is a lot of turnover here as well, too. So we'll, on an average year, see 85, 95,000 homes a year turnover. And so there's a lot of velocity here so they can start to prove their model. And what OfferPad and... Um, Open door, sorry, <laughs> offer pad and open door, and like Zillow offers. You probably heard of that Zillow instant oh, yeah, offers. Zillow offers, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phoenix too. So, um, you know, the thing is, is that they start here because there's number one, there's velocity. Number two, it's a lot easier to get a valuation on a property without being a quote unquote expert. Uh, and for whatever reason, it's the wild, wild west here. Maybe it's the close to California thing. I don't know. Well, well so, so what these, these companies do, right, is they, uh, they drop the other shoe, right? And, then, and I say they drop the other shoe by this way. You know, like a, a lot of wholesalers and, you know, flippers are out there watching like HGTV 24-7. They think they're going to get into the business and they're all over the place. And they send, we'll buy your house for cash. You've seen the yellow signs or we'll buy your house for cash, but they don't drop the other shoe, which is what I'm going to pay for it, right? So nobody calls them because they're like, you know, no, screw that. I know you're going to give me a dollar for it. I know you're going to rip me off, right? But so what these companies do is they drop the other shoe, whether they're using Zestimate or, you know, Redfin or whatever. Let's, you know, fight it as you may. The reality of it is, is these estimates online are getting closer and closer and closer and closer. These guys have their own technology, right? And 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 probably in addition to others. And they drop the other shoe. So it's like, we'll buy your house for cash for three sixty two five. And then it's like, and, and no agent, right? And then it's like, hmm, well, damn, you know, I, I, I thought, I only thought it was worth 380, you know, or 390. So maybe I don't want to sign in the yard. Maybe, maybe I should consider this. And, and then they list with them. And the fascinating thing is not that because there's, there's always been people that have wanted to buy houses, you know, and flip them or whatever. But they're really not looking to flip them, are they? They're looking to actually relist them, which is a form of flipping, I guess. But remove 
the listing agent yep. and replace it with an employee. And Geico Insurance did this about 20 years ago. People don't realize this, but Geico Insurance did this. They, 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 they said, we don't have insurance agents who take commissions. We have a 1-800 number with employees. And then, so these companies are kind of doing the same thing um, that Geico is, is, did a long time ago. And this does two things. Um, the, the weirdest thing that it's doing is it's taking the emotion out of the transaction. Like if you go on some of these blogs, right? You go on Active Rain and you go on, um, you know, Lab Code Agents and some of this stuff, right? And someone puts up a post there about um, these companies can't disrupt us because people always need hand-holding and there's a lot of emotion involved and da-da-da-da. Well, guess what? There's no emotion involved with a, with a $12 an hour employee that only works nine to five, similar to like in how an REO company might work. Submit your offer here in, into this software and I'll send you a little email later on about whether we took it or not. There's no emotional seller. There's no seller that's, you know, going through ups and downs about the price and the, the settlement date and whether the buyer, you know, spit on their floor or not that is none of that crap and they remove that emotion and a lot of people think that by removing that emotion you're then removing the value of a real estate agent now let me know if i'm babbling or any of this is making sense to you yeah no you i mean you're really close on too and the other thing too is that they're willing to just close whenever you want to close and and they're any more, you know, back in the day, you mentioned like, hey, I'll give you, you know, three cents on the dollar or whatever, your typical wholesaler with the yellow sign. At the end of the day, they're, they're going mass market media um, to advertise, to build the brand because they've got a big valuation. They've got a lot of cash to spend to do that, to go and build the velocity. And their message is, hey, we're going to pay you really close to fair market value. Not quite, but you're not going to have a sign on the ground. No one will come in your house. We'll close whenever you want to close. You'll have cash that next day. You know, you'll have your money the next day if you want it, or we can wait 40 days, whatever you want. And so, and they've got the money to do that. And like you said, there isn't the up and down, the emotional part that comes into a transaction. What I think is interesting is number one, the resentment from most agents in the community who don't like that because it's sort of a who moved my cheese type of scenario, in my opinion. And then what also you look at the other side of it is, okay, that's great that this model works now. What happens when we're not appreciating every single day? Like what happens when, when the market takes a little dip? Not, doesn't even need to be a crash like, it, like we had in 07, 08, 09. Like what if it just takes a dip backwards and it slows down? What does that do to their analytics and their ability? Because right now they're built in a market that has been booming for years. And so they feel really good about their data and they should. I mean, they're at a point in the Phoenix market where we'll look up at the end of this calendar year and those companies will control 12 to 15% of the total transactions between open door, offer pad, the other little guys that do the same thing and a hedge fund or two that does a lot of buying. And so what agents are not realizing is right under their nose, things are changing. And now a word from rock star agent and Rebus University graduate, Mr. Jeff Quinton. Hello, my name is Jeff Quinton and uh, from Keller Williams, the Quinton Group. I service all of Southern New Jersey and our expansion team is in the Philadelphia greater Philadelphia area. And just wanted to give a shout out to, uh, to Rebus University, Pat Hyman and his crew. My team, what we've implemented uh, right now is through our onboarding process, we have a, a learning management system called Learning Zen. And inside Learning Zen, uh, in the very first 14 days when someone comes on our team, they have to go through and learn all the sales skills and sales training. And part of that is we require everybody to go through the Rebus University Certified Listing Agent uh, course. And at the end of that, they've got to prove and got to come out and show us your certificate before they even get on the phone, before they even meet with a client, before they go out on any listing presentation. So um, what's interesting is that uh, through this, uh, this course, it's allowed me to leverage my time versus what it used to be where I'd have to show them all of the listing presentations, spend time each individual, you know, for 20 minutes at a time or 30 minutes at a time. So now I can leverage it 
through the certified listing agent course and, uh, and then go back and role play with them what they've learned. So what I've learned right now is that when an agent goes through this course, they feel confident and that's the key is the confidence is so built because they've been able to see someone else do it and then they practice it. And what's interesting is I've had so many agents. In fact, I've had over 20 agents go through this course and become certified and a major portion of them go out on listing appointments when they're competing with another top agent and they actually win the listing on the first try. So the skills, the techniques, the dialogues, and everything that they get from this course, it's pretty incredible. If you want the same amount of listings and the same extremely high close ratio that Jeff Quinton's agents get, just type in the coupon code CLA50 on rebusuniversity.com. That's R-E-B-U-S university.com for, get this, 50% off the certified listing agent course. That's CLA50. You won't regret it. Now, that's what the agent community is not realizing. And then again, what the what that community, what those tech companies aren't realizing either is, and we'll see what happens when the market's not quite so easy too. We'll see how that valuation system model works when it's going backwards or stale and not just going up every day. We'll have to see. I don't know. Time will tell though. Time will tell. So, but let me ask you this too. So we know that they've removed essentially the listing agent, put it with an employee. You know, and the REO business kind of did this too, right? Because they put it with an asset manager, still on an agent, but all the agent was, was a conduit between the, the, the buyer agent and the asset manager. You really didn't need the damn agent, except he had the license, right? Yep. And so they, they've taken that conduit out. Now, my question to you is, do these companies work buyers too? Or are they only listings? They only work the buyers that buy their houses. So that's as it. Of, as of right now, they don't. But I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you can be a tech company and you can have a great valuation. Eventually you have to make money. You've got to have more uh, top line revenue. And so my guess is that at a certain point, we'll see them become a full-fledged brokerage as well to increase the top line revenue. When that's going to happen, I don't know. But for right now, it's like, you know what it's like buying a, it's like buying a Tesla. If you, I don't know if you know anybody who owns a Tesla, but you buy it online. It's really easy. It's yeah, like but, he, the, the, <laughs> but they can't make them fast enough. Elon Musk has said, said he you know, hadn't had, had, had a night's sleep in a month or whatever, and you got all these people that have bought them and, and they don't expect them for three years. And you wonder if the company's even going to be in business in three years. Yeah. So like there's all these challenges, right? But it's easy. Like I bought a Tesla and I bought it online. And <laughs> it was the easiest car buying experience I ever had in my life. Have you gotten it, was, it yet? Oh yeah. I didn't buy a three series. I wasn't going to okay. wait. I'm not okay. patient enough to wait three years. <laughs> um, I know that I had a hard time waiting the seven weeks while they built my car. So you're saying it's, it's, it's an easy experience and you're like, it could be an easy experience too, to sell your house or buy a house. That's what, that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. And people will pay a premium. It's proven that a certain percentage of the people will pay a premium for that. For ease. Like I don't want to sign. I don't want a lockbox. I don't want open houses. I don't want three agents to interview. I don't want all this crap. You got it. Okay, yeah. so now I'm going to talk, uh, if you don't mind, I mean, we can keep going on this because I, I love talking about this deep stuff. So, so you know, I, I talked to somebody last week, right? And, and uh, they're a, a great mind in the real estate space. And it got me thinking so hard that I started writing a blog about this. I haven't finished yet. But so you got these companies, right? They've removed the, 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 the listing. They don't have buyer agents. Traditionally, the co-op commission has been controlled by agents, right? That not, not, not conscious antitrust, but almost subconscious antitrust. And by, by subconscious antitrust, I mean like, like um, if I co-op A instead of B, which A, let's say A is lower, half, yeah. right? Let's say instead of a dollar, I'm co-oping 50 cents, um, I'm shooting myself in the foot because the whole industry is going to change. I'm going to ruin it all. And I'm shooting itself in the foot because my buyer agents will all of a sudden be making 50 cents instead of a dollar because then all the agents in the board will co-op 50 cents instead of a dollar. And these companies, and there's, there's a company called 
uh, H-O-U-Z, and there's a company called, uh, um, uh, what is it called? Some re- X-O-M-E, right? That, it, that, it, that are, oh, yeah. they're, they're trying this stuff with, uh, ba- basically trying to disrupt the co-op. But here's, here's the thought, and this is why I'm talking about Phoenix with you. So they don't work buyers, so they can't shoot themselves in the foot. Right, they have employees, so they can't shoot themselves in the foot. They don't give a crap if the whole industry for co-op commissions drops in half. I guess my question to you is: Do you think that that's possible? Do you see that coming? Um, does that scare you? And what should we do about it? Do I see that coming? Yes. I. I there has to be downward pressure. That, I mean, you can't have this much competition and not have downward pressure on price. Uh, does that scare me? No. Do I like it? No. But I will tell you this, I do like being forced to innovate and I do like being forced to have to do things differently and think differently. Um, You know, call me doom and gloom, whatever you want, uh, but I just think it's a reality of of our industry that things are changing and whether it's 50 cents instead of a dollar three to five years from now, I don't know what it is. Um, But I know it's going to change and I know we're going to have to adapt. And if we embrace technology, to make ourselves more efficient, we'll still be able to earn a really great income and have a great business. And if we don't, we'll find our way outside of real estate. And um, I think that's unfortunately, for some people, that's just the reality of where it's going to be. For me, I, you know, it's funny because I love this industry. It's been really good to me. And yet, I'm also really excited by the, by the changes to it. I'm really excited about the tech. Not, like, you and I were talking offline, but like, the National Association of Realtors, like logo debacle, like this industry needs a shakeup. Tell, tell me about this. So, I mean, yesterday it came, well, I guess a couple days ago, um, comes out that, you know, the National Association of Realtors rolls out a new realtor logo. And the, first of all, it look, just looks cheap. Like it looks, looks like a five-year-old did it. Looks like you could have got a, something better from Design Pickle or from a designer on Fiverr. <laughs> Design and, Pickle. And, uh, which is also another system we have used if you want to edit <laughs> yeah. that spot. Uh, but at any rate, um, it just didn't look very good. It, but the, I think the outrageous part was like there is rumors that it, was, it cost anywhere from $250,000 to $500,000 between research and picking the actual logo. What? For a logo? For a logo. And, and so there was such backlash this week that they then came out 48 hours later and said, we're going to hold off on the rebrand because you guys have definitely made your point clear that, that you're not happy with this. Like who exactly? But the but money was already spent, right? Yeah. But let's just say it was $250,000. So I pay, I pay, I pay dues every year to this organization that I have to pay because of where my MLS sits and, and where my broker, how my brokerage sits. If I want to be a part of my MLS and if I want to be a part of this brokerage, I have to pay those dues. And so I pay them willingly and then the organization uses them to spend 500, 500 grand on a logo that looks terrible. That, that's the, that is the thinking of most people in our industry, and I think it's bad. I think it needs to change. The fact that anybody the, – there's the – forget about the taste of the design, okay? That, that, it was terrible, and it looked cheap. It doesn't look very high quality, yet it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that – that wasn't worth five hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's it's like dealing with Congress, I would guess. Well, well, here's the weird thing, right? If you look at doctors or lawyers and dentists, they don't have a national. They may have a national association of dentists, but nobody gives a crap about it, and they, you know, and they, they wouldn't dare spend money trying to rebrand the national association of dentists. If they did, they would just, you know, like you said, go to Fiverr and rebrand the damn national association of dentists. Why? Why is it that the, that the realtors? you know, industry, right? It's so different. What am I missing here? <laughs> um, I think, I think that we're using logic and this is just not a logic based conversation. I mean, when I look at our entire industry, Pat, like it is very, very antiquated and that's why it's so ripe for this disruption. And that is why the offer pads and the open doors and Zillow Etc. That's why Compass is gaining ground and they're able to raise the kind of money that they've raised is because it is such an antiquated industry and they know that if once you can break past that barrier, 
there's a lot of commission income earned every single year. I mean, I don't know what that total number is, but it's a lot. I mean, it's a big, big number and you can spread that out quite a bit. And I think that there's these companies going, if they think like that, if the leaders, the leaders of the National Association of Realtors, a trade group with 1.3 million mem- due paying members every year will spend 500 grand on a logo, they can't be that smart. We should be able to disrupt that. I mean, that's logic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, No, 100%. And a lot of people scratch their heads on their local boards too. Like, what about the local? Other than, you know, having someone to greet me when I go buy lockboxes, right? (laughs) Or having some class that, that, you know, I can do online for continuing education. What they, you know, what What do they do? do, do, Right? What 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 do they do? this money. I don't know what they do. It's a mystery. <laughs> and you know, what's funny is every time I get challenged by, well, you should come down to this class and that class. It's by the folks that are quite honestly, not doing a lot of business. Right. They're so, really real agents that failed. I mean, that's, just, that's where we, one of our taglines at Rebus university. Most of the courses that are available for agents are, are from other agents that failed. And you know, <laughs> and yeah. who wants to learn from them. How funny is that? Like, I mean, it's just, it, bl- it blows my mind. And I, got, I, I genuinely love this industry. I love this business and it needs a change. And so uh, to back to your original point, I'm not scared of it. I don't, I don't know what it's going to look like. I'll figure it out. We'll, we'll choose and move. We'll make adjustments and we'll adapt and, and we'll come out the other side better for it. And I don't know what that means if the ceiling of my income is as high where the potential ceiling is as high as it was five years ago. I don't know if that gets downward pressure or not, but I'm going to try and I'm going to give it my best shot. Well, I think at the end of the day, yeah, it, it, it's always good to be paranoid because number one, you know, as agents, we should all, always be saving a, a ton of money, right? I mean, I, I know a ton of people that were in business in 2004 that were up on stage, you know, you know, getting big giant ass medals and now they're broke, busted and disgusted. I could, I could, I could, I can count 10 names right off the top of my head, right? Uh, that I haven't seen in 10 years. Like I used to see them like, oh yeah, this guy's killing yeah. it, right? And then it's like, where are they now? Um, and, uh, and it's because they don't save, right? They don't save uh, money. So it's not bad to be paranoid. But I think going back to the equation of, you know, with co-op commissions and are we going to make less, right? Um, yes unequivocally but it will also the transaction is also hopefully going to get a lot easier i mean if you look at the rental transaction right with with lock boxes that renters could open themselves and with with things like cozy where they can go fill on fill out the lease themselves and fill out the application themselves and you never have to meet the tenants um and they can you know ach their rent in and all that that transaction is completely um whatever you want to call it, techno- technologically been, uh, it's done by IT or yeah. artificial intelligence. I think the same thing's going to happen with, with real estate. Is hopefully it'll become easier to um, work with buyers and sellers. And I think it already has with just being able to meet people on Zoom, being able to docu-sign things. You know, there's no more of this running over to the house to get one initial and and coming back again the next day to get another initial and, and you know what I mean? Back and forth. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, the, once, once the contract, once they can use the blockchain for the co- for contracts and you've got everything that just happens automatically, like I, for, first of all, that should take out your operate, that should cut your operating expenses down as an operator uh, in the real estate business. And so even if the top line revenue goes down and your expenses go down with it, you could probably still earn a good income. And I think there's a lot more to come that will make this, you know, how they'll, it'll make this whole process easier and more streamlined for the consumer. Look at Quicken Loans and look at what Mello or uh, Loan Depot is doing where you can essentially get your loan from an app. Like you can fill out everything on an app and it can electronically pull in all the documents that in the past we either had to go to 17 different sites and download and then put in a Dropbox or print out and put in a manila envelope and take oh, over. Yeah. yeah. Like it can be done 
in a couple minutes now. You just got to pull, you got to, you got to do it on your laptop, right? You download your tax yeah. return to your laptop and upload it. And is that a, like that mellow home? I saw Chris Heller is running yeah. that thing. Um, is it the same thing as Rocket Mortgage? Is this a competitor of Rocket Mortgage? Well, not Mellow specifically, but I think their parent company, home, uh, Loan, Loan Depot, they're, yeah, they're going to be a direct competitor, I believe, is, is what they're going. I mean, they're already doing loans like that, and Rocket Mortgage is, has already been making quite a bit of ways. I mean, you know, Quicken's the, num the number one originator in the country, and, by a long shot, by the way, because Loan Depot's number two, and they're not even close. And um, the more that happens, the easier it gets for the consumer. For, for the next time you want to buy a house and you want yeah. to get a loan, and if it only takes you, I don't know, let's just say 10 minutes of time versus the five or six hours it might take you cumulatively now, like which one are you going to choose, especially right. if the cost is the same? Well, in a true capitalist society, right, everything should be getting better and better for the consumer and not necessarily, you know, the businesses who don't want to change it. And I think, and that's kind of what, uh, what's happening. It's, it's very relevant to what's happening with Keller Mortgage, right? Where they're doing the same thing almost that uh, like Open Door, right? Uh, and, 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 and OfferPad in that they're taking out the mortgage officers um, with big fat ass commissions, just like Geico did with insurance with big fat ass commissions. And uh, OfferPad is doing with listing agents and they're making the loan officers get a little thing but they're all in one spot and they're answering a telephone uh, like a geico geico agent right like a you, you know what i mean and they're doing the same thing and then they're taking the cash and they're giving it to consumer and they're saying but you can only use this if you work with a keller williams agent which is brilliant because then the agent's like, oh, you're interviewing three agents. Well, how about this? I'll save you seven grand if you use me. No, it's not a kickback. You just got to use this mortgage company. And if they look into it in a logical way, they'll be like, yeah, this is real deal money. Yeah. And I it's, mean, it's the best for the consumer. And from and the way know, I understand it, at least. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know all the specifics of Keller Mortgage. Um, but what I do know is what you said prior to that, which is, the point is to make it easier and better for the consumer, no matter the industry. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about loans or homes or cars or phones. It doesn't matter. Make it easier for the consumer. Make, give them fewer hurdles to go over to get what they want. And that's, I mean, that's how, that's how stuff changes. Cut, cut out the middle. I mean, and that's people have come on this show and they're complaining about the Keller mortgage because – they have a marketing agreements with mortgage companies, right? And they're getting five, 10 grand a month for their team, um, you know, for these marketing agreements. And Keller Mortgage says, no, we, we don't do marketing agreements. So they're like, you know, they're cutting out the fat, right? And they're saying that marketing agreement, I'm going to give it to the seller. I'm going to give it to your consumer. And, yeah. um, you know, hey. Like, I mean, it's, but it, it's the natural like, evolution. I mean, who doesn't use Amazon at this point, right? Yeah. That's not always a money-saving thing, but it is typically always a, a time-saving thing. And in your mind, you think you're saving money and time, and I think maybe you do when you have Amazon Prime, right? Yeah, like absolutely. And so you, you just, when you start to realize all that can be done with technology and high levels of data to make something easier, better, smoother, cheaper for the consumer – it's all pretty good. It's all a pretty good thing. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, Kevin, this has been awesome, man. We, I, I you know, I love it when, uh, you know, I have somebody on a show that can hold a conversation about this high level stuff and is not afraid, um, you know, to talk about things that a lot of people, number one, wouldn't know about or get. And number two would be just so, would be so afraid uh, to talk about. So I appreciate your candor. I appreciate uh, everything you've done and uh, everything you've given back to the real estate community. Uh, I'm going to ask you one more favor, and that is, uh, as you know, everybody that comes on the show does bring a free gift. Uh, what we do with this free gift is we put it in our agent success toolbox, which has, uh, you know, a hundred or so of the last uh, guests that have been on the show have donated items to the toolbox. You can get it by going to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or texting the word toolbox to 444 999. I'm also going to put Kevin's gift right um, 
on hybendigital.com backslash 4810. That's hybendigital.com backslash 4810. I'll put all of Kevin's information. If you guys want to reach out to him and say thank you, if you want to give a referral to him in Tempe or Arizona or surrounding Phoenix area, please look him up. Uh, all his information, his social media will be on there uh, in addition to this free gift. What did you bring us today, Kevin? Yeah, we brought actually, uh, so the thing that we've gotten really good at is, well, I think that we've done pretty well at is is recruiting and, and showing our value to agents. And so one of the things we brought is a, I call it our career opportunities guide. So it's kind of like a, um, it's a, think of like a pre-listing package for potential team members. So you can get- that's awesome. A pre-listing. Yeah, that's great, dude, because you've got the, you know, you've got the whole recruiting thing figured out. And why, why not have a pre-listing package for potential pre- That's brilliant. I, I, I want to see that myself. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no problem. Happy to. I mean, what better way to, to help lead your people than to demonstrate the activities yourself? So Awesome, dude. Well, if I'm ever in Tempe or if surrounding areas, I'll look you up and uh, let's get together and break some bread. Yeah, man. I'd love to. Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Estate Rockstars. If this free content is giving you a ton of value, I want to ask a small favor in return. I need you to pull out your pointing finger and hit the subscribe button. Yes, hit subscribe, please. The more subscribers that we get on Real Estate Rockstars, the better guests are attracted to the shows. We'll get more guests from the top companies, from the top teams, and even more celebrity guests like Robert Kiyosaki and Barbara Corcoran. Also, if you're not a member of our free Facebook group, go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio right on Facebook and join the conversation. I'm on there myself on FaceTime Lives, and we have a lot of communications and questions about the show, and I'd love to see you there. And it's free. People ask me all the time, where am I on social media? I'm real easy to find. Just type in my name. My IG is I am Pat Hyben. It is blowing up on Instagram, adding tons of subscribers. And I'm on there probably twice a day. So definitely follow me on Instagram as well as everywhere else. Thanks again for listening and keep rocking.